intense environment comes as second nature. Eric has extended this love of teaching to his curricular seasons classes. Whether it's seeing one of his students revel in making a simple soup recipe with ease or taste fresh picked produce for the first time, this is what the cooking with the seasons class emphasizes. Eric Johansson began working with the Iron Forge at the age of 14. He worked his way up from dishwasher to basic vegetable preparation. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Eric Johansson. Um, 
USC Organic does not allow uh, genetically modified and regarding GMOs, I'm not 100% against GMOs, in my opinion. Um, I think that the intention can be great. Um, I do believe that if you take a look at each step of the science, it like, uh, like, dismiss the entire process. Uh, for instance, plants that are resistant to drought, pests, that could be an amazing uh, opportunity for countries that don't have the crop growing to have a viable food source, good clean food source. Um, but it's being found that GMOs are being used now need stronger and stronger sprays uh, to ward off pests and weeds uh, that are adapting to, um, to the stronger plants. Um, it's just they're rising to the challenge and meeting the GMOs. And, uh, they're sort of evolving together. Um, then there's the bioengineering of these plants to only work with uh, certain patented sprays. Um, so if you want to grow a certain crop, you're forced to buy certain products to control that crop. Uh, um, there are other uh, sci-fi-like stories of uh, genetically modifying corn plants to produce any number of pharmaceuticals, penicillin, spermicide, you know, a corn plant. It's uh, pretty incredible. And uh, you know, imagine if those things were misused, got out into a natural food chain, uh, that could be a major catastrophe. A little scary to think about. Um, and then as our population grows, how do we feed an ever-increasing population a finite um, group of resources? Um, rapid expansion has led to rapid poisoning of our land and sea. We're just over-harvesting, overfishing. Um, we're growing too fast to safely control the growth and science behind these uh, food additives, chemical preparations uh, for spraying fields and, um, and genetically modified foods. Um, we just don't have long-term studies available yet. Um, we all want to believe that we're keeping healthy, <clears throat> that our foods are not slowly poisoning us. So how do we do that? Um, I wish I had answers to all of these questions. I, uh, I'm in the food industry. Uh, food sourcing is in my face every single day. Um, I don't have good answers, <coughs> um, but I can give a couple of recommendations. Um, when buying food, try to buy mostly whole foods, foods that you would recognize if you were to take a walk on a farm. Um, those need the least amount of coaxing or food additives or, or, or whatnot to make them healthy or, or shelf-stable. Um, for instance, fruits and vegetables, fish. Um, Whole grains like barley, dried corn, it's ground and not chemically processed, it's just crushed. Um, things like that uh, need minimal processing. They don't need to be um, have too many go through too many machines, be cooked with too many food additives to get to another state. Um, processing uh, seems to be sort of a catch-all word. Food, processed foods seem to have this very negative connotation. They don't have to be. Um, it's uh, pasta, it's a processed food. You take uh, wheat, uh, you mill that, uh, you make flour, you add a few other ingredients to it, you have pasta. Um, it's not this horrible, ugly monster of processed food. Um, it's when it has to go into long-term travel and storage that we have to add more things to it, make it shelf stable, keep pests away, make it look pretty on the shelves. Um, my own friends I've heard say, uh, you know, I, I don't really like to buy organic foods because they don't look as nice as this. I mean, just going first glance right on the shelf, the red pepper, this one's sort of all gnarled and whatnot. It's got lots of folds, uh, whereas the other one might be this big, uh, you know, bright red, almost like a stock light sitting there or something. Um, so I think we need to try to get away from that, uh, that first glance. Um, this is how natural foods are. They grow like that. Um, foods that need to be brought to a supermarket need to go through these processes to keep them fresh and safe. Um, so these food editors, they do have some good intentions to keep the food fresh and safe, but um, they can have longer term consequences when not controlled correctly. Um, 
these additives, they change all the time. It's a very complex uh, industry. The, food, the further food gets away from its original state, the more it has to be processed. Um, I would say that cooking is a form of processing food, uh, which is not necessarily a bad thing. So don't just look at all processed foods as being bad, but not bad. It's those additives that we put in there that make them bad. Um, those chemicals that don't you know, need to be listed because they're 0.1%. Um, just be aware of how food is getting to its finished state. So stick with mostly whole foods. That's a pretty easy thing to, uh, to do. Um, a potato. Um, easy to recognize if they have minimal handling involved. Um, I would then also recommend buy at least USDA organic. Um, they're keeping GMOs out of your food. Um, like I said, I'm not anti-GMO, but it's just such a fast-growing, uncontrolled um, industry these days. It's difficult to know exactly what you're getting. So sort of as a blanket statement, go with organic. Um, USDA is the big one. Um, there's lots of different um, organic certifications, like QAI, Quality Insurance International, a big international one. Uh, OCIA, Organic Crop Improvement Association, or even local, uh, North Organic Farming Association, and Vermont, Northeast, California Certified Organic. So there's a couple different certifications, um, and it costs not a small amount of money to put that label on your food. Some farms just choose not to because they feel uh, it's actually watered down what they're what they've been doing all along. Uh, you know, your standards here, your USDA is here. I'm going to pay money to you know put myself down here. On this. Um, USDA organic, you're getting at least 95% organic products um, um, in your food. Um, putting that catch-all label of organic can, I think, lead to a false sense of security sometimes. Uh, you're just get home from work, you need to pick up dinner, someone's calling you on the phone and saying, we're all starving here, get home quick, you're tired, <laughs> work 10 hours. Go into the supermarket and you see that little you know, green and white USDA stand. And go, oh great, grab that, you're safe. Um, but, um, you know, there's that, there's that 95%. What is that other 5%? Um, in 2005, um, 2006, Agricultural appropriations bill was passed with a rider allowing 38 synthetic ingredients to be used in organic foods. Um, so we need to be very careful here that we're not going backwards. In my opinion, organic should be moving forward, lessening the amount that we do work. Organic, um, let's say uh, organic cattle feed, industrial, you know, in, the, in the supermarket when you see that USDA organic there. Um, there's a product called neotame, it's a sweetener. Um, 7,000 to 13,000 times more sweet than sucrose or sugar. You can add that to a uh, cattle feed, um, such as grain. Um, cows don't typically eat grain. Um, they like grass, the bow lines. Um, and this mutant can be used to cover up food that you wouldn't normally want, uh, whether it just be grain or something that's maybe just not the best to eat to start with. Um, and it can be used in such a small amount because it's 7,000, 13,000 times sweeter than sugar that uh, sometimes it doesn't have to be labeled. It could be less than 1% of the ingredient in the feed, and it can still be whole organic. Or organic. USDA organic uh, beef could be using this, you know, this feed. So the last, but I think most importantly, is uh, go to the local farms, buy local. Um, talk to those that grow your food. Um, go there, build a relationship. It's not just um, buy, not just about buying the local ingredient. You, know, you are building bonds within your community, You're supporting the local economy. You are making that connection. Um, we have some really great farm markets in this area, uh, the Lower Valley Farm Market. You can go there, um, and you'll have you know, anywhere from 10 to 15, 18, 20 vendors, and. Um, uh, it's a great place to pick out uh, local foods. Great. Okay. Eric's contact information will be available to you, and of course, as always, you can always contact him at the Army Infringement. Eric, thanks so much.